Okay, second verse, same as the first. Greasy. Looks like the grease leaked through the bag that I did last time. I'm not mad. That's just how things go sometimes. Okie dokie, to glove or not to glove? See, here's the thing. This is food safe. I wouldn't necessarily eat it, but that grease is not food safe. Should I glove? The answer is yes. When you give yourself high amounts of any sort of foreign substance, you want to protect yourself from it. Okay. Um, we'll just leave those there. Hello, my beautifuls. All right, so I brought some extra super lube out here because I noticed that on those wheels, after I put them in, that um, this grease is a little thick. And if you ever wanted to dilute grease, you take its base component, the lube by itself, and just add it to it. That's it. Very easy. All right, so I need three of these. Hmm, you don't see this. That is a wear spot. You may think that is rust, but it is not rust. It is um, the degrading of the oil that is in there because I can wipe it off with my finger. There might be a small amount of rust in there, but this bearing is also the closest bearing to the hot end. Well, all three of them are. So, seeing it degrade like that is to be expected, but I've been running this for, not continuously, but almost two years straight, and to see that it only has a little bit of oil degradation like that, that's a pretty good sign. I was happy with that. Well, I'm doing maintenance. Seeing something not falling apart is a good sign. If you do maintenance and everything's falling apart, you've waited too long. That's not maintenance, that's a repair. <laughs> so our goal in this maintenance job is to prevent repairs. All right, so I'm gonna reattach that mounting plate. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the belts before I put any wheels on there. Funny thing about these belts is that you have to examine how it is on the table. The belts go under, well they go on over under this mounting plate, meaning that they come through here and they go down this V groove, this one right here. There's also a lot of room in there because you can move that belt backwards and forwards to create your alignment position, center position or zero position. That's not something I could necessarily easily measure, so it is, I'm going to feel it out. I'm gonna put this on there, and I'm going to adjust it to the best of my ability by hand. Now one of these is gonna go on a lot easier than the other. On some of these machines, I have noticed that the belts were installed upside down or going from the underside up. No. <laughs> that, that'll cause a misalignment. You don't want to do that. All right. Remember that question I asked earlier? Is it easier <laughs> with it on or not? <laughs> Third time. We're going to relax this motor. Texas. Hey, that was much easier. All right, so like I said, I'm feeling it out by hand. I'm feeling it out and I'm putting it relatively in the middle. I am not favoring either side. That's not something that's easy to show on camera until I go like this. Hey, look, it's just kind of in the middle. Can you see that? I hope you can. I have to check that later. It's kind of in the middle. I'm not gonna favor any side. Now, before I put the wheels on, 
I'm gonna put the motor on again. It's completely unscripted, can you tell? <laughs> You notice that I was finger tightening that you do not want to go full bear and tighten those with a lot of force. If finger tightening is not good enough, then it is a poorly assembled machine. Always just finger tight, not put leverage behind it. Do not do that. Strip, and this is aluminum, it will deform. You could make permanent uh, errors in the mounting bracket that you can never get out unless you replace it so don't do that <laughs> if you take apart your mounting bracket and you already noticed that the hey if you already noticed that the um let's go pop a little bit could you please no it's locked there it goes if you took it apart you already noticed that behind the eccentric nut you have the, um, sorry, thinking and doing. Behind the eccentric nut, you already have the issue where it's taking off the anodized blue color and it is silver underneath. That is an example of what's going on. So I will be extending the lube to that area. I will not be adding a washer there because that will misalign the wheel. Um, a washer, a washer, a washer behind all three would be the same, especially if it's the same size washer. Look at me, problem solving on the fly. I gotta go get the other one. The ones with the washers. You keep seeing me do this? Yeah. My earbuds keep falling out. <laughs> <It's, that's laughs> uh, Alright. Three washers. Unfortunately, these washers aren't... It's not going to work. Thought it was. Scratch that whole idea. Okay, so why is that not going to work? Because the eccentric nut relies on the back force from the back plate. So everything I just said is wrong. All right. <clears throat> Feed that back through the back plate. Put the eccentric nut. Remember, there's a rise, a side with a rise. Is that how I want to say it? Side of the lip. That goes towards the back plate. Doesn't matter how the wheel goes on. And lastly, the nylock nut. All right, let's give that a test roll. Feels good. While I have it here. Mm, bloop. 